Hello, I'm Crafty Patty. Good morning to you. I'm just finishing up my cup of tea and then we're going to show you how to make this beautiful macrame coaster. It's all done in double half hitches. So if you've never done double half hitches, you'll be a master by the time you finish this one. I'm going to show you all the supplies you need and we'll walk you through step by step and then you'll be able to complete your own set of macrame coasters just like this. You'll want to get yourself some three millimeter cotton macrame cording and it needs to be twisted. So a twisted macrame cord, it twists around each other like so and it will unravel nicely on the end so you get your beautiful fringe. There is macrame cord that is braided. You don't want that. Make sure you buy the twisted. I bought this large ball from Amazon and it's actually 200 meters or 218 yards because I knew I'd be making lots of coasters and I actually got three large coasters and two small coasters out of this whole ball. But uh, you can certainly choose to buy a smaller amount if you just want to make the one little coaster we're making today. And of course you'll also need a tape measure so you can measure out your cording and a pair of scissors. You can choose to work on a tabletop, and if you do, I would grab a little piece of masking tape to hold down your project, and then it's easy for you to come in and do your knots, and you've got some tension to pull against to make a nice, even knot. Your other option is to make a board. I've just taken some pieces of corrugated cardboard, and I've got a, maybe two or three that I've put together so it's firm enough. And I've just taped it around the edges to hold it together. Now, the only reason I've used black is because I'm demonstrating for you so you can see the white cord against the black background so you can see what I'm doing. But the corrugated cardboard works really well for when you want to add your macrame. And then you can just go in and add your pin and it sticks in really nicely to the corrugated cardboard. So you can see that it, uh, it's nice and strong and it makes for a nice surface to work on. And the last item you'll need is just a regular hair comb. And you're just going to be using this to unravel the strands on your macrame project. I've now cut one strand of cording at 80 inches. And I've cut six strands at 30 inches. We're going to take the 80 inch piece of cording that we've cut and I'm going to measure down 15 inches. So I've measured down about 15 inches and right here we're going to tie a slip knot. So we're just going to turn and twist it over top like so. And then the loose end is going to come up through that hole. You can grab it with your thumb. And you're going to pull it out by holding these two together and cinch it up. You've now made a slip knot. And into the slip knot, we're going to add our six 30 inch pieces. So just attach this to your board. Now you're going to take one of your 30 inch pieces, fold it in half and get your end and you're going to come into your circle, fold your circle over and pull out your two strands. You've now made a lark's head and you're going to do the same with your other five strands. I'll do one more for you. Underneath, through the hole, over the two strands, and pull your strands through. And you can cinch it up and you've made your lark's head. Continue with your other four. Now that you've added your six strands, 
On your slip knot, you'll find that one is tight and it will not slip. The other one will slip. And as you can see this one, if you pull on it, it will slip right up and close it up. So let's just take out our pin. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to cinch this right up nice and tight and keep moving all your lark set knots around until it's nice and tight. And just give it a really good pull. Cinch it right up. So you've got a nice closed in circle like so. I'm going to come back in. I'm just going to put my pin into the middle and we'll just fan these all out. So here's your long base cord. It always is on the top of the cords, your working cords that you're going to be working with. So here's our first one that we're going to make our very first half hitch. So lift it up, base cord on top. This is your first 30 inch cord that you folded in half. So what we're going to do is you're just going to pop that right through the hole and you're going to let that twist around by pushing with your thumb so it makes a nice circle around your base cord. I'm going to pull it up quite tight and now we're going to come around again so you're laying your working cord over your base cord, lay it on top and bring it through the hole and you're going to cinch that up again and pull it up tight. You've now made your first double half hitch. That's your first one. This is your base cord. I'm going to turn it around and let's do the next one. Here's your next one. Again, your base cord is on the top, your working cord is underneath. So you can hold it like this, bring your end through the hole, let it loop around. Now if you see it doing this, like it's tying a knot, you don't want that. To correct that, you just take your thumb, push it, and then it's wrapping around like a circle around your base cord. Again, pull it quite tight, and now we're wrapping around and through the hole. You've now done your second one. Let's go around. I'm just going to secure this a bit more with into one of the actual cords. There we go. Now take your next one. Here's your next one. Again, it's coming underneath. Base cord on top. You can hold if you want. And then through the hole. Let it loop around. Cinch it up good and tight. Wrap around and through the hole. And the next one. We're going to go all the way around till we've done all our cords. What you want, might want to do, just to keep track, you started right here, so let's put our pin right into that first one. We've done three. So we've gone around once, and you should have, these are our 12 cords that we were working with. And remember, our very first cord we added was our base cord that we measured out 15 inches and then had this longer to make our slip knot. That's why we've got two extra cords. So in total, counting our base cord, we should have 14 cords going around. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add one more cord because we're going to continue to add more cords as we go around so we can fill in the gaps. So I've now cut one cord at 25 inches. I'm folding it in half. This is our base cord. We're going to again add it with a lark's head. And we'll cinch that right up 
to our last knot that we've just made with our double half hitch and we'll pull that in nice and tight. We've added our filler and now we're going to go around again. So this is going to be our first one. So, so you can keep track, let's put our pin right in the first one here so you know exactly where you are. All right, again, doing our double half hitches. Folding right up tight and around again. Move it around, do the next one, wrapping around through the hole and you're cinching up really nice and tight every time. Now this is the only thing that you have to watch now. I'm going to do about three of these. So I've done three strands. And what I'm watching for is how much is it pulling away from where I'm trying to tie my knot? How much is it dragging down? So right now, if you look between here and here, we've got about a quarter inch gap. So we don't want this dragging too far to tie our next double half hitch. So we're going to add another 25 inch piece of cording. Again, fold it in half and make your lark's head. Cinch that up. And that will fill in your gaps and make it nice and tight all the way around. So that's what we're going to do for our pattern is just keep working around. And you might be doing three. You might then start to do four or five before you add another one. But that's how you're telling if you need to add another one. See, this one here is ready to go right where I want it to go. Okay. And I'm going to stop there. So I've done another three. And again, between here and here is about a quarter inch. And again, here's my base cord. Underneath, pull through. And cinch it up. This is where we started. We've still got a little bit more to go around our circle again, again. Again, 25 inches I've cut, fold in half, add it to your base cord with a lark's head knot. And that's basically the pattern that you just keep going around and around and around. And every time you get a bit of a gapping, add another cord. But once I've gone around, one time, I know this is where I'm st I've started because there's my pin. You just want to cut your strands a little shorter because otherwise you're just wasting cord. You don't need to cut them as long. So remember the first cords we cut were 30 inches. Then we did another round and we cut them at 25 inches. And you can just kind of check it by getting a piece of cording and just seeing how long these are. So now I'm going to go and measure this. And it's now... 20 inches. So now I'm going to cut cords that are 20 inches long and add those ones. Okay, so I think he probably got the idea. 
around we go again until we've got about a quarter inch gap and then add another cord. So I've gone around until I measure about four inches or 10 centimeters. And so we don't have a ridge right here, just to blend it in a bit more, just finish it off with a basic knot. So the first part of the knot, just give it a really good tug. And that way it just gives it a little bit more of a smooth transition to end it off. And now we're going to cut our fringe. Now you can certainly come in with just a basic pair of scissors and cut to the length that you want. But I find coming in with a rotary cutter is so much easier because you're not picking up your strands. So now I can just come in, I'm actually using my cutting board and I'm going to cut to about two inches. So I can just guide around and approximate my, approximate my two inches around. Just moving it around here. And I know my two inches is about here, so I'll just bring it up and angle it around. And now that I've got it roughly cut to two inches or whatever length you want it, you can come in and just comb it out so it's only halfway. So I've left half of this one uncombed and the rest of it's combed out. Or you can choose to comb out the whole section. And how do I do that? I just use my comb. And I take it, and you can probably do about four at once here, and just take your comb and pull down on the ends, and then slowly bring it up. Now, if you only want half of your um, braid combed out, then stop there. And I kind of like it like that. So instead of taking it all the way up to here and combing the whole thing out, I'm just going to go around and do the same all the way around and just comb out half of it. But it's your choice, whatever you like, whatever you think looks good. And then once you've got it all nicely combed out, just go in and even up any longer sections like this part right here and just take it off with your rotary cutter and even it out. And there we have our finished Maccabee coaster. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video on how to make the small Maccabee coaster. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video and don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos because there's another video coming up shortly. If you've made the small one, chances are you're gonna wanna make the big one for your teapot. So keep watching and watch for your next video on how to make a larger macrame coaster. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.